Hi, this is Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute, presenting case 4 for the second edition of the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case of recurrent saphenous vein graft failure that was successfully treated with recanalization of the native coronary artery. The patient had previous coronary bypass graft surgery with a CTO of the mid-right coronary artery and presented with a recurrent failure of a saphenous vein graft to the PDA. This is a fairly common location for failure of vein graft to the right coronary artery. The proximal segment can get restenosed and sometimes this is due to stent uh, fracture, although it was hard to determine if that was the cause in this particular case. However, there were more previously stents, previously placed stents, and also the patient had a significant lesion at the distal anastomosis of this very diffusely diseased right posterior descending artery. Therefore, given the restenosis in the proximal vein graft, the new lesion in the distal anastomosis, we tried to recanalize the native right coronary. The RCA CTO had a clear proximal cap, had a long occlusion length, essentially from the mid RCA all the way to the PDA, had a diffusely diseased distal vessel, and had the patent vein graft to the posterior descending artery. So given the patent vein graft, our initial plan was to try retrograde, followed by undergrade wire escalation or dissection reentry if the retrograde attempt failed. However, despite multiple attempts, we were unable to advance the retrograde guide wire proximal to the distal anastomosis because of a very tight acute angle. And this is a common problem in vein graft anastomosis. Going backwards can be challenging and can be facilitating by using the hairpin wire technique or by using pre-shaped microcatheters like the supercross or using the venture catheter. To our surprise, we tried an undergrade pilot 200 and that very easily crossed all the way to the right posterior descending artery as confirmed by the retrograde guide wire that was already there. That was not our intent and that is why we have used a JR4 guide which is of course not the commonly used guide in the undergrade uh, fashion. However, a balloon would not cross requiring maneuvers to modify the lesion as well as increase support so we used the guide liner as well as a threader balloon microcatheter and we were able to then dilate through the occlusion and then deliver stents all the way uh, from the posterior descending artery to the mid and proximal right coronary artery all the way to the ostium. That restored undergrade TME3 flow. There remained a significant flow in the vein graft and there remains controversy as to whether this vein graft should be coiled to minimize restenosis in the native vessels. However, we did not coil it in this case. We're still skeptical about this coiling because if something were to happen in this very, very long stands in the native coronaries, having included the vein graft, could be a problem. We did intravascular ultrasound that showed that the ostium was not covered. Hence, we placed an additional drug eluting stand at the ostium. And then we optimized the ostium with the osteal flask balloon to facilitate re engagement in case of restenosis. And after doing that, we obtained a nice result with TME3 flow in the native right coronary artery. So in summary, in patients who have recurrent saphenous vein graft failure, recanalizing the native vessel can be a preferred treatment strategy because of the much lower risk, both for the procedure itself, but also for restenosis. It may be worth trying undergrade, even in the cases that appear to be a straightforward retrograde, because sometimes we get surprised, as in this case, and the undergrade wire successfully crosses through the occlusion. A retrograde crossing through a vein graft can be challenging navigating proximal to the distal anastomosis when the angle is tight, and that can be a limiting factor for the retrograde approach. And finally, IVUS can be useful for confirming good coverage of the ostium with stent that can minimize the risk for subsequent incendiary stenosis. Thank you.